I can love somebody that may not see the world the way I see it. Yeah. I can love somebody that may not even try to see the world as God wants us to see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're live. <laughs> right. Should we do that again? Finger, finger slits, dude. No, that's fine. <laughs> oh man, dude. You're, you're just like wrong you're button. only two sips in your coffee. That's what it is. <laughs> we haven't got that's, enough go juice in, dude. I, I don't know why. I told myself to switch it. <laughs> I kept it on the air horn. Dang it. Oh man. Dude, That's talk funny. about a uh, coffee. Uh, your mom had me try this uh, mushroom coffee. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, it's called Rise. Yes, oh dude. my gosh, it's a probiotic. It's yeah. good for your gut health yeah. and stuff. There's okay. There was two that she had. There was one that uh, it was like instant coffee, mm-hmm. and well, no, but they were both instant coffee, I guess. Mm-hmm. But one of them, I don't remember the difference, but. Oh, one of them was like super organic. Oh, I guess are they both organic? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so yeah. one of them was locally made, I think, and the other one was she oh, bought yeah, from the like a Sister Herbs. Yeah, I think I think it was Mushroom that coffee, one that yeah. I liked more. Yeah, yeah. She said that one tasted better, but it, we it, tried the rise. Yeah, I didn't uh, like the rise. The I, rise. Was I gave little, it up. And I threw some French vanilla in there. <laughs> it helped it, but yeah. it was I could instantly taste that that mushroom flavor. But then you get coffee after, and you're just like. What is going on here, <laughs> dude? I I I can't. I, I I liked it. I liked the other one, the the local one better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I the rise was it was bad. <laughs> yeah, was this like, is your this, official review for this, rise. Yeah, you know I, t- I always give Lissy a hard time for drinking unsweet tea and oh, Angela yeah. Garcia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so if you're watching Angela, it's still dirty water. Yeah, dirty. No matter water. no matter how you slice it. <laughs> no. Get you some good sweet tea. My mom's sweet tea. Oh, dude. Perfect. That's, that's unsweet tea. That's just not right. That's a that's a blasphemy. Yeah. Blasphemy. That's, that's that's that should be a sin to every Texan. Yeah. Is uh what what am I trying to say here? Unsweet yeah, if it, tea. if it ain't, you don't have no sugar in it, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> did you just <laughs> hit the air horn again? Yeah, I did. <laughs> It's Man, a, sta- I'm, it's a I'm statement. A, I'm on my game today. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you're a Texan, no guy, no sweet tea. Burr, 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 burr. Oh, <laughs> man. That's hilarious. This, I feel like the crowd, this is what they're, they're, <laughs> they're just like, looking at what us are they like, talking this about? is not funny. Um, not very. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're like, boo, you stink. <laughs> they can throw a tomato. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, man. <laughs> uh, dude, yeah, but dirty water, uh, sweet tea, is, or unsweet tea is just not, that's not good. And that's what that coffee tasted like to me. It tasted yeah. like the dirty, nasty water. Oh, yeah, for coffee sure. Coffee tastes like coffee. Yeah, there's, there's even black coffee. Yes. So I was reading this article, and it was talking about how uh, the rise in temperature where most of the coffee beans are made, uh, uh, it's made the the crops for the coffee beans uh really really tart like uh like kind of burnt that's why when you try any of your normal coffees now it's like really bitter like all the coffee is like really bitter now because of the rise in temperature for the areas really yeah 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 and huh. it's been like that for like the last two three uh harvests so huh. slowly well i i normally don't like black coffee right Cause that's what you're talking. We're talking about yeah, coffee, yeah. right? Yeah, just coffee. Yeah. yeah. So I normally don't like black coffee, um, and I've always seen like you're not a man unless you, <laughs> yeah, unless you drink black coffee. black coffee. The bur- Some hair in your chest. Cowboy <laughs> coffee. Steve, uh, the, my the guy that used to drill for yeah, my yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're like, you gotta drink cowboy coffee, boss. <laughs> And I'm like, well, if it makes my voice higher, I don't know yeah, if I want. I no, I'm just kidding. I, I love Steve. You drink uh, that and grows hair on your chest. It reminds me of a story with uh, my dad. He's like, oh, you want some of this hot sauce? It grows hair on your chest. And I'm like, but grandma's eating it. 
girl, <laughs> you should see my grandma just throwing <laughs> hot sauce on her. I'm like, he's like, she has a hairy chest. <laughs> what? <laughs> God, you're like, no, like, grandma. This, <laughs> no, no. So, don't do that. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> um, Man. Anyways, where was I? Oh, I, I like cowboy black co- I like, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, cowboy coffee. But I, I like, I don't like black, I don't like black coffee just to drink. Like right now, I got mm. some cream and sugar in it. But oh, yeah. if I'm eating breakfast, man, and specifically at at a uh, uh, tech cafe, no, 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 uh, not tech cafe, uh, Red Zone, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, right? Is it called Red Zone? Red yeah, Zone yeah, Cafe here yeah. in town. Uh, the the black coffee they do. I don't know how they make it, <laughs> but because they didn't have they didn't have like good cream or anything, so I was like, man, I'm just gonna drink black coffee because they had half and half. I'm not a half and half person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and then they have sweet and low. I'm not a sweet and low person, yeah, yeah. so I was like, I'm just gonna drink it black. Dude, it actually made my food taste better. Really? Yeah, and the, and 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 the water they use. <laughs> It's not tap. It's like yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, what are y'all doing? What are y'all here? doing back here? What kind of <laughs> yeah. filters or water? I don't know. I don't know. But the coffee and yeah. the water is like top notch, man. If I take, if I get like a breakfast with some French toast or pancakes, I prefer like a black coffee. But because then if it's too sweet, it'll take away from. Yeah, life. I'm like, all right. It Try gives it, it accents get, the food. Yeah. <laughs> like when people say to drink red wine with like spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, I'll just take a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> you just go ahead and give me a doc, Dr. Pepper, please. <laughs> I, I'm a Dr. Pepper person. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, man, we're just. Let me just show you my membership to the Big Back Club. <laughs> <laughs> big Back, yeah. Big Back. <laughs> a little yeah, membership I, card. I have to play a little clip <laughs> of the Big Back. Yeah, yeah. Um, big Back, Big you know, man, Back. Well, big uh, back, there, there's big no way back. we can segue into this, right? Oh, yeah. We, we've we just. A, a good segue is. Okay. Uh, did, you, did you catch a last preaching and shout out to the red bracelet gang oh dang it i, f- I forgot to put mine on yeah I, i'll take mine off because i don't know man trying to sleep with a watch on and everything it just feels yeah weird. i i can't like, sleep with my arm like gets caught up yeah. i'm like all right <laughs> <laughs> but uh it, it's just a reminder of uh god's grace and mm. his sacrifice and uh I, i'd like to take that segue into uh we're getting to the end of October, beginning of November, and it's election season. And mm-hmm. how do we uh, apply Christ into uh, this election season? Mm. And, and how do we uh, show as much love towards um, whichever mm-hmm. party that you're going towards? Because there's there's a lot of animosity out there, and there's a lot of uh, hate going right. back and forth, right? Um, I think there's there's a uh, clip out there with uh, one of the rallies and one of the uh, people in oh, the audience yeah. is like, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. "Hey, uh, Jesus is Lord." Uh, I believe you're talking about this clip right here. I, I heard about this, and uh, so let's let's take a look. Way, and they and did, did as, as he intended. intended. Oh, you guys are at the wrong wrong rally. rally. No, No, I I think you meant to go to the the smaller smaller one down down the the street. street. Disclaimer, we, we are not swaying one way or another, but based on our faith alone, is, is there a scripture that you have or yeah, that, um, would, that would explain well, a little uh, bit more in depth on how we, because I know a lot of people, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steer away from the video itself a little bit. Well, I, I you know, before, before we do any, um, I guess, you know, some breaking down of of how we would vote, I think number one is, you know, th- throughout election season, because 2016, we saw a huge, uh, I guess you could say, uh, a lot of animosity, mm-hmm. a lot of, uh, uh, I've never seen such uh, division Yeah, it's that like, was caused. 
from it, politics. What's weird, man, is it? It's like one side is uh, turned into a list of things, and mm. then the other side is generally the opposite, right? Like one or the other, right? And there's a a strong line. It's like far left, far right, mm-hmm. and there's like no in between. Like right. you just can't get something in between, and and it's not so much as the candidates. It's just the people involved in it have created it to where it's a complete division, mm-hmm. an absolute complete division where there's like nowhere close to meeting up in the middle. And it's, it's kind of sad, but like you were saying in 2016, uh, you saw that way more. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, pretty I, crazy. I, you know, I never, I never paid attention to politics, but I do remember when, so I, I can, I can remember when Obama came into the picture Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, this was man. I was like still a teenager, um, so I can't really remember exactly. Uh, two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Yeah. Yeah. I was still. I was in high school. Yeah. But I remember when he came into the picture. If I'm not mistaken, the whole implications of abortion started really coming into play. Uh, you know, homosexual marriages and things like that were being legalized and. So that's when I began to see that distinction mm. for me. You yeah. know, I, I mean, I, I hadn't seen it before. Maybe it was there. I'm sure, I'm sure it was there. Mm. But being close to adulthood, I started seeing like, oh, like there's yeah. some, there's, there, some there's some <laughs> distinctions here between these parties. I never paid attention to politics up until that point. Right. Uh, and and then of course Obama, you know, making history, being the first black. Uh, president mm. um, and you know things like that I know that that was historical and I'll never forget it right yeah, yeah, yeah. and Obama was such a well-spoken president oh, yeah. like man he could you know he could really he, he knew how to write his speeches yeah. like I, I probably one of the he'll convince a snail to walk oh. into some salt for sure <laughs> like, he, like he has he definitely he's very well versed man like he'll he knows how to talk and to talk properly this all right here this is going to change you forever <laughs> yeah. and you'll never go back Dude, his change. mannerisms <laughs> <laughs> sorry i can't do it it was perfect <laughs> my, my theory crazy conspiracy theory you don't hear you don't hear anything from kamala harris for the last like three years yeah and right. then she just pops up and she knows how to nail this speech down and she's using mannerisms from obama I never, I never paid attention. Oh, to I that. watched it yeah. whenever she finally just like mm-hmm. announces that she's gonna uh, put in for uh, to be president. Like that uh-huh. entire speech, pretty well. That's not anything that she's used to doing. Right. And then she sounds really good. Her mannerisms like match Obama's. I'm like, you've been getting coached, yeah, like, for the last three yeah. years. You know, I, I will say, and I know we're kind of you know going left field here, but I, I will say that. I haven't seen a a decent presidential debate <laughs> yeah. that's like civil, yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And and that's just my I I feel like that should be anybody everybody's just unbiased opinion about it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the way they would talk to each other, like you know, Trump and Biden. Yeah. I, that was a I'll be honest, that was, that was a joke. Yeah, <laughs> they were they were like clowning on each other's golf game. Yeah, and like, I was like, where are we at as a country? <laughs> I, I gained hope when I saw the vice presidential debate oh, yeah, with J.D. Yeah. Vance and, and Tim Walls. Yes, I was yes. like, okay, this is a yeah. little bit more civil. Yeah. And this is what I thought the presidential debate was supposed yeah. to look like. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, going back to you know what you, what you were saying, mm-hmm. uh, I you know seeing the distinction, seeing the separation, and 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 also the division. You know, I I I asked the Lord, like, you know, how do we? How do we navigate this? And you know, I I believe that everyone, the word of God should always be your foundation, right? Right, right, right. And anything that you do in life, whether it's when you vote or whether it's uh, how you decide uh, to lead your family, you know, yeah. uh, for us men, yeah. and also for women, how how you decide to discipline and 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 help your children or you know whatever, the word of God should always be your foundation, right? And so you know, when it comes to this season. Uh, you know, Jesus should always be your foundation. And, you know, it breaks my heart that Kamala, you know, said what she said, Mm -hmm. um, because on one hand, I get it, you know, 
there's this thing called separation of church and state. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and the people who want separation of church and state, or the people who bring it up, excuse me, usually are those who are trying to push God out right, right. of politics, right? Yeah. Um, but I don't know if anybody knew this or not, but the original intent for separation of church and state was actually to get politics out of church. Mm. In other words, you have it, it, it actually was an emphasis of freedom of religion. Mm-hmm. It was an emphasis of you have this opportunity to worship however you want. Yep. You know, that that was the original intent of separation of church and state. It wasn't right, necessarily right, right. we're pushing God out of everything. Yeah. Because that's how I see some people bring yeah, that's it. How they read it. Like, oh no, no, separation of church and state. Don't you dare talk about God. But then it's, you know, it's, people can talk about Muhammad and, and nobody, you know, bats, bats an eye, eye yeah. you know, and I'm like, wait a minute, you know, the separation of church and state wasn't to push God out. It was to push politics out of, out of religion, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, so, I, but, but, you know, going back to, I, I keep going like everywhere here. Sorry, but I, I want to go to a scripture real quick because I believe that this scripture is going to be really important during this season, uh, especially for us Christians. And it's in Colossians chapter three. Verses 12 through 14, it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And here's the next important part right here. Bear with each other and forgive one another. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So, you know, <clears throat> I can I can love somebody that I can that I disagree with. Right. Right. Yeah. I can love somebody that may not see the world the way I see it. Yeah. I can love somebody that may not even try to see the world as God wants us to see it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, because what's going to pull somebody to God isn't going to be. I win the argument, so you come follow me. Right. It's at the end of the day, it's love. It's the love of God, and and I feel like, you know, we can win. I, I would. I'm more interested in winning people over to Jesus, right, than mm-hmm. winning them to the whatever party I'm I'm voting for. Mm-hmm. Uh, which we can talk about that here in a little bit, yeah, but yeah. but I, I'm I'm more concerned with bringing people to God's kingdom, right? You know, there's yeah, another yeah. scripture. I think it's in Daniel that says we are citizens of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that that's important, uh, that we remember we're citizens, you know, as Christians, we, we need to remember our citizenship card first is with yeah. God, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and, and his kingdom, not just an, an American. Right. Right. What do you, what do you see? Like, what are, what are some things that you see that might be, okay. So just, you know, trigger warning here, <laughs> because I know some people might disagree with this, but majority of of and I better be careful when I say this when you look at the two parties right now you see that most conservatives mm-hmm. are going to lean towards republican right because they're more for you know first of all uh you know somebody like Trump has always uh pushed for support for Israel and in scripture, it says that we are to, you know, mm-hmm. bless Israel, right? And not necessarily just with money, but also to support prayers uh, and stuff like that. But um, so we lean more to the right. Uh, and, you know, for me, mm-hmm. I'm going to vote my convictions. I'm going to vote who is going to be more, uh, who's, <laughs> I, I don't look at Trump and say, oh, he's a sinner. I'm not going to vote for him, right? Because right. then... I mean, is Kamala not a sinner, too? You know, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Kamala, Kamala. How do you say it? I say Kamala. <laughs> okay, I say Kamala too, but Kamala, whatever. <clears throat> my point is, uh, I don't. I, I mean, nobody's perfect. That's my point, right? Because I've had some, you know, I've heard, I've seen some TikToks where they say or videos where they're like, yeah, you know, Trump, Trump, uh, and, they have, and they're pastors, and they're like, Trump, yeah, yeah, Trump's a sinner. So why would you vote? Yeah, for don't vote for him. Yeah, yeah. man, and I. Uh, I think we had a conversation with somebody one time and it was talking about how uh, based on the government itself and 
uh, how do you react with it as a Christian and the church itself? We have not used this as, as a whole, the church. We have let so much stuff uh, slip out of our hands, mm -hmm. like taking uh, the prayer out of out of, out of uh, schools or mm -hmm. taking things away from us, like little things like that. Yeah. And uh, the conversation I was having with that person was, Yes, we had, in my personal opinion, we had a really good presidency whenever Trump was there. Money was available. Milk wasn't $20. You didn't have to oh take gosh, a loan out man. to get groceries. Like th that kind of crazy. Yeah. Gas prices weren't crazy. We step into something out of there and could it be just a lesson that God's giving us like, hey, I need you to step up and I need mm. you to be my voice and and uh vote i need you to uh side with my plan not just lay win like mm -hmm. we're not part of this this yeah. land itself right uh, one of the scriptures saying that's good it, it's yeah. just like just let it do as it as it mm -hmm. please and don't vote on any of them because we know both are our sinners so we don't vote we, we we step aside that hurts i feel like that that's a big big whammy if yeah. you don't vote yeah yeah yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah, you can't you. even you can't even complain because you didn't vote. Thank you. You yeah, know what I mean? You have no right to say you, you anything can't if say you didn't like, vote. You can't complain yeah. about the gas prices. You can't complain about anything. <laughs> yeah. You gotta go with it. That's good. Like the next time somebody's complaining about something about the economy of the country, did you vote? Did you and vote? if they say no, then you can tell them then you have no, you have no business room. complaining. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're not helping the cause. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Um yeah, I you know, go so, I, and that I was I was getting somewhere and I forgot. But you know, so we're gonna lean most Christians, or I, and I say in my mind most Christians, but you know, I feel like most conservatives yeah. will lean more towards the right. Uh, what what do you see that might? What are some examples that you might have seen where conservatives can lean so far to the right that oh, they become too? too political you see yeah, what i'm yeah, saying yeah. like what are, what are some examples that you might see oh man um and i'm and i'm talking about the right right now because yeah. again historically conservatives lean more to the right so yeah 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 it i aka this, republican yeah and this and this goes for me personally it, it goes to uh it goes to uh yes like I was saying earlier, where one side is all a list of things and the other mm -hmm. side isn't like it's the opposite. Like mm -hmm. from there, and by no means this isn't categorizing everybody, but uh, there is Christian Democrats, there's Christian Republicans. It just so happens to be these more radical Christian Republicans that are Christian Republicans, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily. Uh, live in the word they're just bumper sticker christians mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i belong to this church it's on my bumper sticker and mm -hmm. now uh they'll have like the little uh jesus is love and then they're honking at somebody and doing whatever yeah yeah you know what i mean yeah. and uh i think there's that's that's the angle that uh one side will go towards and be like this is the Christian side and this is Republicans, but this is the way they're acting. And it get, they've gotten so far as to like, we we're standing our ground and uh, we're holding down as much as we can. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I can't, I can't pinpoint like an exact example. Do, do you have something in mind? Um, I, I, I can't remember specifically, but I've seen, I remember I've come across, uh, I've come across a, a video of, um, I think it was a pastor. It was a pastor. And he called uh, the Democrats a bunch of, and then he, he actually used a, a vulgar word. It wasn't a cuss word, but it's a vulgar word. I'll just say it, it, it stems from the word cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's as best as I could put it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, um, it, it's anyways, he called, he said that. And, you know, I thought 
where is where's the unity in that? Where's right. the love in that? Like I I get what he's saying, and 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 even to a de- degree, I understand why he said it. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna stand on you know it, it would almost be like if Jesus was to have like walk this earth which he had every right to and say yeah. you guys are a bunch of idiots like <laughs> yeah come on like I've said the scriptures are there like it says everything about me and and who what I'm supposed to do mm-hmm. idiots like y'all are a bunch of morons and just <laughs> can you imagine like if Jesus was just like going off right and, and I know people you know people who are radical like that will say well Jesus flipped tables yeah but let's give that some context here yeah, yeah. he was Why? flipping Why tables because these people were using uh, the Jews mm-hmm. in that time were using an area of of the temple that was actually a reserve. Now, get this. I, I, I don't know if people have talked, and we've talked about this on the podcast mm-hmm. before. The reason why Jesus flipped the tables is because the Jewish people were using an area of the temple uh, uh, courts that was actually reserved for all nations, for everyone. And these Jews were treating it like it was like, well, we, we can sell stuff here. Like, it's not a big deal. And like taking advantage of that yeah, space yeah. that was reserved for all nations to pray for yeah. everyone. Because again, before Jesus died on the cross, very, very religious, you know, aspects of the temple were, or, or things about the temple were, you know, that was as far as you can go. If you weren't a Jew, that's it. That's mm-hmm. where you can mm-hmm. go and, and you couldn't go any further. Mm-hmm. And, and so Jesus was upset at that. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't necessarily calling people stupid and and, and insulting them. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, they were insulting the people that Jesus wanted there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted everyone there. He didn't just want Jewish people there. And, right. and so people know not all people, I think not enough people talk about that. Yeah. yeah they yeah. just say, well, Jesus flipped tables, so I can call you a bunch of and it's like, no, no, that, no, that's not that's not what you meant. That's not what Jesus did that for. So um anyways. Um. Yeah, I I think that's the that's the only uh, time that I can remember some you know things like that. I know there's more. I I know there's a yeah. lot more. Um, but I I want to get to you know. So since we're talking you know about this, we talked about we talked about you know the right. Okay, and and, and listen, I when I say talk about, I'm not saying we're we're gossiping or anything. We're just kind of. Mm. Let's look at it for what it is, right? Yeah. Um, going back to that Kamala or Kamala Harris, uh, man, I, I hope I don't get flack for, for <laughs> butchering her name. Uh, I've just heard everybody call her Kamala so much. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I want to I want to go to back to you know her for a second. You know she uh, obviously doesn't she doesn't necessarily um, how do I say this. It, I don't think she really puts herself out there that she's a believer. She has said that she does yeah. pray and yeah. it's kind of a weird, awkward. Oh, once uh, or twice. <laughs> I do pray every day, sometimes twice a day. Um, a day. <laughs> once or twice. Sometimes twice. She sometimes made that clear. Twice, like, yes. oh, sometimes, sometimes twice. twice. <laughs> and then she kind of laughed, um, <laughs> I which I heard she's pretty good at. Yes. <laughs> uh, where's my... Where's my uh, uh, no, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> the rim shot. Uh, yeah, I heard she's pretty good at laughing. Is it? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's good. Because, <laughs> um, yeah, First Timothy uh, yeah. 2, 1 through 2. I urge then, first of all, yeah. that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings mm-hmm. and all those in authority, that we may live peacefully and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And that, that itself right there shows that you, regardless of whoever it is, mm-hmm. they are appointed by God. And it's yeah. based on what his plan, because it's not like... Uh, and this goes back to our my last point where it's one side, it's a list of things. The other side is yeah. a whole other list of things. Both are owned by God. It's not like God owns Donald Trump and the devil owns right. Kamala Harris. Right. Like, that's not how it is. God owns everything. We talked right. about in the last podcast where it's like, uh, what's the opposite of black, white? What's the opposite of light, dark? Mm-hmm. And then what's the opposite of God? 
and then people give too much credit to to the devil. Yeah, because there's no other equal to God, and I think people are tr- so caught up in this division that it's supposed to be one or the other, the yin and the yang, mm-hmm. and, and so much that w- we don't take into uh, accountability of First Timothy two one through two. You know what's interesting about that scripture is. So Paul wrote that, right? Right, right. And if I'm not mistaken, Paul was living during the reign of, I think, Emperor Nero, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, who was very volatile yeah. towards Christians. Christians, yeah. Uh, and he, I, if I'm not mistaken, one of the things that he was known for was beheading Christians mm-hmm. and putting their heads on staffs and using them as torches at night yeah i mean i know that's very very that's like crazy, yeah. wow like that's probably too much for the children's ears but <laughs> i you know disclaimer by the way but i i think that that scripture just means a whole lot more when you understand yeah. the time that it was written yeah like like those are really hard times yeah as, as a christian yeah. it's a hard time yeah but like the, the like it says Prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for all kings and all those in authority. Wow. Yeah. And so no matter who's in office, mm-hmm. right? We're, we, we are, we should be, uh, how do you say this? Compelled to, right. to pray for whoever is yeah, in yeah. the office, compelled for people, the lead, these leaders that are in these positions. You know, it's one thing to, st- sit here and talk about it and be like, well, I would have done it this way and that way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But when you're in those person's shoes, you know, you have no idea what they have, the stress right. that they have, have to Have you seen deal the with. pictures of uh, aged presidents? Yes. It is insane. Yes. Like, uh, uh, I saw I saw one of, uh, of Obama. That's when I first saw yes, that. Yes, that's when I first saw And that. I was like, dude, like, they that's stressed a lot of Obama stress, out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> But then I seen the rest of them, yeah. like you know, with Bush, oh. and then I've and then recently, you know, yeah. with uh, 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 Biden. Oh. Biden. Good. Gracious. I'm like, Lord have mercy, yeah. that dude just like, yeah. it, <laughs> it, like it's gra- a whole different person. Gravity just like took over that man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just sorry, man. Yeah. But that but that goes to show you the stress. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That 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 go that they are put under. You know, recently this is probably like left field here, but it goes with this. I, I we watched Prince of Egypt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, have you ever seen that movie? Yeah, a long time ago. Dude, yeah. such a good movie. It's a good man. one, yeah. Uh, I never thought about this, even though I've read this, but you know, when when Moses was leading the people mm-hmm. out of Egypt, mm-hmm. the amount of people he had to lead. Yeah. I mean, the, I, if I'm not mistaken, the number of people here, let's, let's just look it up real quick. Yeah. I, I'm curious because, uh, let's see, how many people did Moses there we go jeez 600,000 people y'all that that's you can fill up two Lubbocks yeah that's two Lubbocks you can fill up like the AT&T stadium yeah like five or six times like, it's ridiculous that is insane that's the kind that's how many people one man was tasked to lead age between 20 and 60 that is crazy and you know what's crazy is yeah i was gonna say most of the time when they numbered people 60 600 000 men yeah age, yes yes this, if we include the women the number would be double double yeah too, so it's over a million dude that's insane yeah because that's right because in those times when they would uh uh when whenever they would count a census yeah they would always just count the men right and and so yeah so when men were were counted you weren't you, start, you weren't counting their children and their and their wives yeah. that's dude crazy. that's insane that's a lot of people and, and then he, he, one man was leading <laughs> these people like i get i mean i i dude oh my gosh yeah. I, I remember being a teacher yeah and i had to lead all these you know 24 children to right, educate right. I, I would look and and then I remember when I'd go to like our our PDs our professional developments, and I would look at our principals and there's just like you know maybe three or four hundred teachers you know mm-hmm. at these at these things maybe less I don't know 
there was a lot of teachers, man, right, at the school right. that I worked at. And and I just felt bad for them, man, because I'm like, man, this is probably so stressful because <laughs> yeah, so you're dealing with so much. Like I had to deal with like 20, 20, you know, plus maybe give or take, you know, teenagers. Mm -hmm. But you're dealing with all these adults, man. Yeah. Like leadership is not easy. Oh, my no and means. So, so, you know, going back to what we were talking about, you know, with that scripture, Pray for you. Pray for these people, man. Yeah. You know, and, and pray for you. Hey, I, this is a plug for every pastor. Please pray for your pastors. Yeah. You know, right. there's a lot of things that, you know, they, you know, will not say or, or, you know, talk to. There's things that they are entrusted with that, you know, they have to, you know, they have to pray about and yep. help. And, you know, that can be stressful. And uh, so pray for your pastors, man. Every pastor out there, shout out to every pastor out there. Uh, shout out to every pastor out there. That's that's a clip from me. Yeah. That's all me back there. Yeah. <laughs> How do you do you your say? celebration? <laughs> what does that come from? I don't even know, dude. <laughs> I've seen that before, though, where like the little kids doing that. <laughs> Uh, no, that's good, man. Uh, leadership is not for the faint of heart. Yep. Uh, I mean, being a leader here at EG, I can attest to that, man. It's, it's, it can be stressful at times, but then it's so rewarding. Yeah. But, you know, anyways, going back to politics, man. Um, uh, there's Proverbs uh, 3, okay, uh, 5 through 6. Read it. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your That's path straight. straight. And that Hallelujah. Kind of like what we're talking about yeah. is depending on wh whichever side it ends up going to, pray for our, our leadership, pray for our authority. Don't lean into our own understanding because regardless, and this is my personal opinion, let's throw out a crazy conspiracy theory. At some point in our lives or in the future, we are going to have to get to and end times, we're gonna have mm -hmm. to get to a certain point where uh, things have to come into an alignment. So Jesus will come back, mm -hmm. and there will be trials, there will be tribulations. It's not gonna be sunshines and rainbows, and then boom, he just shows up. Yeah, based on what what your belief is, and uh, that's what that's the, the part of not leaning on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would like a million dollars in my bank account. I would like gas prices to be lower. I'd like Groceries would be cheaper, and but out of out of those hard times where gas is expensive and I gotta uh, spend a little bit more money, t uh, money's a little bit more tighter. Take that time to reflect on yourself and be like, "Thank you, Lord, for the things I do have," because there's someone that doesn't have these things, mm -hmm. and uh, I at least have a, a house over my head. I have a family that I that I'm still able to provide for and I still can focus on providing my tithe because that's what God commanded me to Hallelujah. do. You know what I mean? Come on. You're, you're preaching over here. You're preaching. <laughs> we need to, we need to pick up. We, need to, <laughs> we love you, God. <laughs> I just, He's gross. Yeah, man. Shout out to Mike Server, Shout by the way, man. I, every now and then I'll reach out to him. I'm like, we got to do another pod, but I don't know. I, that man's so busy Yo, now, he dude. he is really busy. And uh, hey, congratulations to him, by the way, because him and his wife are are expecting. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, so I know that that's super yeah. exciting. Uh, but anyways, yeah, man, dude, you're preaching yep, over yep, here, yep. man. You're preaching. I, I want to I bring up another scripture real quick uh, because, you know, during this season, um, whether you lean to the right or to the left, you know, sometimes we get so focused on the candidate uh, that we think, you know, gosh, okay, okay, now it came to my mind. Okay, mm -hmm. it came to my mind. And now I was trying to remember. There was this guy. I don't know what he did. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what he was doing, but he was in his truck or car. Mm -hmm. And he's like, there's a cop, I think a cop like trying to bust his window open because he did some, I think he did something wrong. Uh -huh. And he's just like, he's live on his <laughs> Facebook or TikTok or something. And he's like, Donald Trump, save me, Donald Trump, save me. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Yeah, dude. I was like, what? what? Like, 
are you praying to Donald Trump? Yeah. Like, dude, he's, this is a guy, man. This is a man. It's just one man. Yeah, it's just one man, dude. Like, and he, you know, you you probably did something wrong. That's why yeah, the cops are about to bust your window open. Yeah. I, I really don't know. I can't remember this, the, the circumstances. I'll, I'll probably post it later. But but I just thought, come on, man. Like, uh, and, and that made me think of this scripture. Um, uh, so Psalms 118, uh, Verses eight through four. Wait, it doesn't give me the scripture. Hold on, let me let me let me bust out the Bible here. Here it is in Psalms one eighteen, verses eight. It says, "It is better to trust the Lord for protection than to trust anyone else, including strong leaders." Man, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's an entire verse itself is including oh, strong leaders. Like that's one real big crazy, takeaway right? is to include strong leaders because people get so comfortable in sitting behind and like. We're mm. we're per, we're protected and mm-hmm. everything's fine and dandy, but you get complacent. I think that's a complacency part, mm-hmm. and they they don't take that into accountability. Mm-hmm. And then complacency means no growth mm-hmm. in yourself. That's right. Man, that's good. I need to get an offering plate over here. You, just, <laughs> you keep preaching over here. Got some coins. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but uh, yeah, I. I, I I can't believe I I don't remember why, but I can't believe you hadn't seen that video, man. No, that man. guy he, he's got his hands lifted, really, like this, and he's just like, Lord, he's like, no, he's not saying, Lord, he's like, Donald like, Trump, please. <laughs> and people are like making fun. I feel bad for him, yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, come on, man, like yeah, you did it to yourself. You, I don't know what you did, but you did it to yourself, and you are calling on the wrong name. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, now, again, you know that's. Just a reminder, you know, that sometimes we can get so caught up in politics that we, it becomes an idol. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen that, man, but like, you know, the, the, and, and I, I do, there was a, there was a time where I, um, I would listen to a lot of political podcasts, uh, just cause I I liked, you know, what they, what they had to say. I was interested in it. Of course, this Mm -hmm. was around 2016 election season when things really got dicey and, and crazy. I was like, what is going on? I want to be a part of this. And uh, so, yeah, I, I looked into all that. And, and but it, it became, I became obsessed a little bit with it for a while. Right, right, right. And, you know, I think it, you know, basically Loki became an idol to me. Like, because yeah. I was like, I wanted to know stats and, and facts and things like that. And, and, and honestly, that stuff isn't wrong. I don't, I feel like when people do that stuff, it's yeah. not wrong. But for me, it got in the way with my relationship with God. Right. Uh, for somebody else, they can they can get in all that and be really good at it and still serve the Lord faithfully. Like uh, one of the guys that I think of right off the bat is Charlie Kirk. That that dude goes to like college campuses and he just brings like you know he's got Turning Point. Is it called Turning Point? point. You got four Turning B's. Point USA. That's what it's called. Turning Point. Right. Yep. All right. He check. Yep. Charlie right. Charlie Kirk did a. Uh, interview on Turning Point interview. Yeah. And he brought up a lot of those statistics that you were talking about, the the Christian yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, statistics. All right. So this is uh, Charlie Kirk, Turning Point USA. And uh, so we're talking about statistics and all that. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and he's great at it, right? Like yeah. He, I, and, th- and this is why I say I don't give any flack or I'm, I'm not giving flack to people who do that. It's just, you know, for me, I can't handle that because then it becomes an right. idol and I just get obsessed yeah. with it. But this guy is like really good at what he does. Mm-hmm. He didn't even go to college. Really? Did you know that? No yeah, No, he never went to college. Yeah, That's he he actually has he got this that thing. YouTube university. Yeah, I guess so, man. <laughs> but he, he actually talks about how college can be a scam. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, I mean, technically he's right. You can get a lot of information uh, via internet now. Yeah, it's all granted. A lot of internet. You'll you'll never be able to take the, away the value of you know personal one on one education mm-hmm. interacting. But anyways, I'm I'm yeah. on point. All right, check this out. This wins. It will be because the church handed her the presidency. Right. It is the only missing ingredient that we see right now. I do GOTV for a living. Guess what? Young people are coming our way in a historic way. Young men are the most conservative they've been in 50 years. So. So you, you can't say, oh, it's all a bunch of those college kids at Boulder. I was at Boulder a couple weeks ago. We had thousands of kids show up, so it's not their fault. Guess who else is rising up? The muscular class, the working class of this country, the truck drivers, the plumbers, the electricians, the welders, the police officers. So you can't blame them. 
We have moms that go to school board meetings that are rising up in huge numbers. So you can't blame them. What I'm getting at is the missing ingredient is what we've always taken for granted is that the church actually cared about the nation. We are on pace for a 13% decrease of Christian turnout. This is a five alarm fire in the clearest terms. There is this spirit of pomposity and self-righteousness that some pastors have decided to invoke where they will say, I am a Christian and I'm a believer in Jesus. Donald Trump is a sinner and I can't vote for a sinner. Okay, so truth be told, I was All never right, really the uh, biggest. So, yeah, let's go back here. All right, so what do you think about that, man? Yes, yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier, where uh, the church itself is pushing itself away and just like kind of just saying, okay, mm -hmm. uh, we don't take sides. We Yeah, the light went out. <laughs> I, just, I was like, did it just go out? <laughs> uh, yeah, so it, it's talking about how the church doesn't take sides. It doesn't. It doesn't uh, vote on somebody because Donald Trump's a sinner. Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris is a sinner. We don't. We don't interact with that. But we're we're taking so much away from the opportunity to. Uh, what's the wording? It's we're taking away so much from the opportunity for us to uh, go towards God's vision and go towards uh someone that has more christian value and has more of the church in in their mindset instead of trying to pull the church out of everything mm -hmm. taking god's name out of everything right and we've let it slide and we've let it happen for so long now that uh like he's saying that the the decrease like we the church itself has the capability of impacting an entire election and they're they're the uh, missing ingredient, like uh, Charlie had said. Mm -hmm. The church is the missing ingredient, and if one party can figure out how to reach out to the church, it would change the election by yeah. huge margins. That's good. Yeah. No, man. I, 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 I. On one hand, I get why they say that, right? Because yeah. it's almost like it's too messy. We want to get our hands out of it. Yeah. Um, but then you're like, man, but you're missing an opportunity here. Yeah. Uh, and and I feel like and then and then you're hurting the country. Yeah. You yeah. know, you're hurting your you you're not doing your due diligence to be a you know a citizen mm -hmm. you know and a law abiding citizen right like you you have the right you know to vote and so yeah. I think that is it's important you know for for you to get out there and vote um, and and I've heard you know where some pastor, like certain pastors will, you know, use their platform uh, to to uh, basically endorse, mm -hmm. you know, candidates. And and on one hand, I get it. You know, I do because I'm like, yeah. man, you know, there's some things that are really like, man, you know, we as Christians need to step up and vote, vote this, right? But then I'm also thinking, are you striving for unity in that moment? Mm -hmm. Or are mm -hmm. you more... Are you more concerned about pursuing a uh, a candidate, right? Yeah. And I think, okay, let me ask you this: How would you, if you were, let's say you were a pastor, and it doesn't matter what size your church is, but let's say you're a pastor, and it's voting season, what would you tell your congregation? Mm -hmm. I mean, would you flat out say, "I'm voting"? this way or that way right or how would you word it if you if you were in that if you were in those shoes man and, and i'm gonna answer your question with a question but okay because we've already talked about in times and right the way things are set up how do you differentiate based on how there's going to be uh false prophets and false doctrine out there and people are going to go and say, yeah, I believe in in this candidate and uh, because X, Y, and Z is legal and it's okay to do these things. When in reality, if they're really into their word, you you could read between the lines. You can understand that that's not right. Like That's not what God's design and his, mm -hmm. his intent is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and... and 
and I was just looking up while you're discussing that, uh, James 1, 5. Okay. And it, and it says, uh, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. So it's easy to be like, this TikTok has told me this is who I'm supposed to vote for. This social media platform keeps telling me I'm supposed to vote for this person. But in reality, if you, and this is for everyone out there, build your relationship, Mm -hmm. pray, seek the word. And it says it right there in James. If you're lacking the wisdom, he will give you that wisdom and show you who you're supposed to be voting for. Mm -hmm. Because going in there on your own understanding isn't going to give you the the best outcome. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that was making me think of the scripture uh, when you were saying that um, how people are like, well, you know, they're going to make this legal and it's going to be. Uh, so First Corinthians uh, 10, 23, um, it says, and I'm going to read the NLT version uh, just because it's it's a lot easier to read. Um, but in the scripture says, you say I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. You say. I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. Uh, and in saying that, you know, you have to, you know, read between the lines and say, right. okay, it may be lawful in this place to do yeah. it, but does that mean it's actually good for, for me as yeah. a believer? Yeah. You know, it may, if everybody else is, you know, in the end times, right? It, it, the Revelation, it says, or not book of Revelations, but it talks about that and, uh, one of the scriptures says, you know, in those days, good will be called evil and evil will be called good. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just like, man, you know, yeah. more and more, you know, you see that <laughs> yeah, you happening. See it more and more. Yeah. Yep. But man, this That's is crazy. a, this is a good, uh, good yeah. topic, man. Yeah, it, it really is. It could, it could have gone on for hours yeah. on hours on hours. hours. And we were about to get into some rabbit holes, but luckily we drew ourselves back a little bit. <laughs> I know. Man, there was a clip that you were going to bring up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I don't know at the beginning. Know, yeah. Uh, go ahead, go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go. We're on the same page. Okay. I was about to say the exact same thing. <laughs> at the beginning of the podcast, we played a clip of uh, Kamala yeah, Harris. In rhetoric, yeah. I, yeah. I want to show it uh, just because uh, we, t we, we showed Kamala's rally, right? Uh, right? And we showed you how, you know, she was very... Um, I guess she made it made it clear, you know, that Jesus wasn't a part of that rally. Right. Uh, but you know, just to show you something encouraging, here you go, JD Vance, uh, vice president candidate uh, under Trump. In rhetoric and anti-Christian approach to public policy, I don't think we've, I, I don't think that we've. That's right, Jesus is king, and I don't think that we've seen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't think that we've seen that. anything like this. Do what? Did you see that dude? No. He's like, <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> I'll have to go back and watch it. Oh, um, well, that's cool, man. That's encouraging. You know. Yeah. Uh, listen, we're not telling you who to vote yeah. for, uh, but you know, I'm gonna tell you right now if if Jesus is welcomed in a certain party's rally then ah, yep. you know that's convincing my spirit to say okay i think i yep. need to i think i need to look more into this and, and vote because don't don't put your hands up in the air and say i just don't want to take part in this you know you know do your due diligence and vote right um and and another thing too you know don't let people judge you for that you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah yeah like oh you voted this or you yeah. voted that like Come on, let's strive for unity. You know, yep. uh, I'm sure that there are people who vote mm -hmm. and probably regret it two years down the line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it, you know, vote. Let I said this at the beginning, mm -hmm. but let the Bible be your foundation for everything that you decide. Right, right, right. right? Like if you're going to vote, then just go to the Bible, go to God's word, pray and then vote. Yep. Yeah. You know? That's that's as it's best as, as we can put it. Yeah, that's as simple as we can get. And uh Jesus is king. Jesus <laughs> is king, yeah. 
So, uh, and nobody can vote him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that <laughs> was. I don't know. I kind of want to go back and see it now. <laughs> well, church family and friends, we're so glad that you're here. You stuck around yep, yep, and yep. Uh, you, you muscled through this one. Yep, uh, yep. But this is a good topic, man. And, and if you got any comments, leave us a comment. Um, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, yeah. YouTube channel, share, share. Uh, Encounter Grace Church. Uh, that's actually where our studio is located at. And share, man. Uh, hit the notification bell. We also got an app, Encounter Grace Church app. If you download it, our podcasts are also available on that as well. Nice. Uh, so, all right. Any last words, friend? That's it. Hey, family, friends. Don't forget to live, love, and lead by example. Example. Is there?